Our ruling class has a pretty dismal record of failure recently, from Iraq to the financial crisis to the opioid epidemic. Policies set by people in power seem to have damaged the country, and yet no one who thought any of this stuff up ever suffers or is held accountable. That's the way it seems, anyway. Nassim Nicholas Taleb has been one of the toughest critics of this arrangement. He's just released a brand new book called Skin in the Game, Hidden Asymmetries in Daily Life, and he joins us tonight. Ashley, thanks for coming up. Hi. Thank you for inviting me. So it seems like one of the themes of the book is that if you're profiting from a system, you ought to be sort of at Checked risk by, from the exactly, system. Exactly, at some risk. Let's say, and that causes uh, the problem of what I call the pseudo-expert. Uh, you know, a butcher, when you go to the butcher, you know the butcher is an expert at whatever he or she will be doing. Same with a dentist. You, you can check on, they have downside risk and they're filtered out. There's a filtering that comes with the fact that they can, they're subjected to evolution. They own their own risk. A cook in a kitchen, if a cook cooks something horrible, <laughs> visibly would be out of business. But the problem is you have a class of people who are immune to that, simply because they're not judged by reality, they're judged by one another in academia, in bureaucracies. Yes. They're not judged, so you can have pseudo-experts go forever, you see? A pilot of a plane is an expert at piloting a plane, but I'm not sure a policy expert is an expert at anything. <laughs> you well, see? I, I, I think you're absolutely right, and it's yes. demonstrable. What's so striking, though, is that this principle extends even into sectors you think would be pure meritocracies, like the finance sector. You're yeah, a very the famous sector, person. The finance sector, actually, in the hedge funds, for example, they eat their own cooking. So a hedge fund operator will be subjected to risks and, and will be, right. uh, uh, you know, if you blow up, you're out of business. But in, in, in the banking system, for example, uh, you can have managers of banks um, uh, not pay for losses because they're employees. They make the bonuses when, when things are right, and when there's a loss, the taxpayer eats it. That's what happened with banking. And, and because of revolving door, particularly under Obama, bankers got the largest bonus pool in history in 2010. You see, after they, they, they lost more money than ever made in the history of banking. So banking is not immune to the expert problem, but uh, hedge funds are. I mean, people, they're normal people. 99% of Americans bear their own risk. Yes. Okay, you have 1%, not even 1%, a small category of people, they're immune to these risks because somehow they're judged by one another and it cliques get formed and then you start having metastatic bureaucracies. See, 100 years ago, if you take Europe or the United States, these class of pseudo-professional did not exist, okay? Progressively, now that GDP, uh, uh, you know, government, uh, you know, attributed to uh, GDP attributed to government is rising, five to ten times what it was in Europe, that class is swelling. They're probably 20, 30 times what they were in 1900. So, but what I guess what's confusing is, so you have a class of people with no incentive to make good decisions because there's no penalty for bad decisions. Exactly, and no but, filtering. And no but filter. they're making all the key decisions. That's all what the key decisions. shocks that, me. How did that happen? That's the right. I have no idea. How can you be wrong on carbohydrates, you know, with their advice of what the Americans should be eating? How could Thank be wrong? you for reminding yeah. us. It's true. Right. On carbohydrates. They were wrong on Iraq. They were wrong on Libya. They are now wrong on Syria, okay, because there's no filtering. They're not penalized. And so, so my idea is both empirical. Of course, these guys know nothing. I call them intellectual yet idiots. Uh, they're good at taking exams and some sets of exams and se select one another. Um, so they're empirically not good, and, but morally, it's morally unacceptable. In, never in history, never in the history of mankind have we had people who were warmongers without being uh, in battle. <laughs> yes. This is the first phase in history you see that. That's interesting. So how, yes. would, you, how would you reconnect risk to reward? <laughs> well, decentralization is one issue, one, 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 one uh, obvious solution. In Switzerland, decision makers in Washington look at an Excel a spreadsheet and they're not penalized by, 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 by those <laughs> they're punishing, you see. In Switzerland, yeah. decisions are bottom up, the maximum amount of decisions are taken locally. So you live in a community, you have more at stake than just being elected or not. You have grandkids in the community, you have things, your life is there. Uh, you own a place, you're part owner of the place. So the more you go from bottom up, you see, to top down type of system, the more you have that class of people. 
And, and this is what they're rebelling against. The English, I was in, in the UK last week, and I'm talking about Brexit. Brexit is not about Europe. Brexit is about a bunch of bureaucrats running your life. Right. So what, I mean, I, I guess for you, what are the implications? You're a very well-known person it, globally. You're a famous author. I was a author. trader for a long time. No, I was a trader for a long time. Okay, so that's so, the question. Do they hate you? Uh, they, they don't hate me because it's sort of like, uh, for example, the econom in the economics uh, uh, profession, given that I'm both a trader and a mathemat mathematically, you know, mathematician, uh, they sort of don't mess with me because I come from the field. But, but there's one thing, I mean, I explained the, in my book the election of Donald Trump to one simple fact. When I see him standing next to bureaucrats, I know he's not one of them. <laughs> Right. Uh, you can tell. I'm, I was a trader. A, 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 someone, a butcher would tell, okay, that this, he's not one of them. Why? Particularly, he has scars. Having scars means you've done something. You've taken risks in your life. Yes. You see? And, and risk takers uh, uh, are, uh, have some appeal to the population. They do. Uh, they're, they're a little more real. Thank you. Yes. What, what an interesting conversation and what an interesting Great. book. Thanks Thank a lot you. for that. Thanks a lot for inviting me.